This egg is like when you see someone whose head is too small for their body, and you're just like, how did that happen? How many barbell shrugs did you do to create those giant traps and shoulders with that tiny little head? Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. There is a pandemic sweeping America. <laughs> That's not a way to start. That was how I was gonna start it until I realized there was. I was gonna talk about people stealing fries off your plate. You know what really grinds my gears? People who ask for a fry off of your damn plate because they never just want one fry. No, they want one fry. Then that one fry turns into two fries. Then that two fries turns into six and then it multiplies and then their fry lust starts breeding like rabbits. They have no more damn fries. You know how you ensure that you always are stocked full of fries? Keep a big bag of frozen ones in your freezer. You should probably keep the frozen ones in your freezer, not anywhere else. Don't keep them in your car. That happened to me once. I kept a bag of frozen fries in my trunk, like accidentally, and then it just, it kind of turned into mashed potatoes by itself through the Burbank heat. The point is frozen french fries are a great staple to keep in your freezer, but you don't have to limit yourself to keeping them as a side. You can use these as an ingredient, and I'm gonna prove it to you. None of you ever believed in me, but no, I'm gonna prove it to you today that we can do that with three simple hacks. We've broken them down, and the time goes right there. We got full written recipes down in the description. Let's get hacking! First French fry hack, uh, latkes. Latkes are a thing that as the only Jewish kid in my class growing up, I was asked to bring in every year, and then it was tough to be like, my parents work. I'm just gonna make latkes, are you gonna pay them? You gonna buy the groceries, Miss Gauntner? Anyways, point is, I've made a lot of latkes growing up. I still love making them. Typically, you would use a fresh potato and shred it. That is the most annoying part of making latkes because you need, then you gotta wring it out in a towel and all that. So we're gonna make latkes using some Or Ida fast food french fries, not a sponsor yet. Uh, also, hey, here's a fun thing. We were thinking about doing like a full themed month on Mythical Kitchen devoted to one food, how to make it perfectly, how to make the craziest, best versions you've ever had. Uh, French fries, burgers, pizza, something that you love, fried chicken. Let us know in the comments what sort of theme month you might want to see, because I think that'd be really cool. Because we just kind of like, some people ask like, how do you decide what you cook? And they're like, oh, I don't know, we just kind of like, do stuff all the time, I don't know. Uh, and so that'd be a fun thing, where we could just like do a bunch of burgers one month, or pizza, or fried chicken, or like, are there any other foods that exist? Salad. Salad, yeah, salad month. Let us know if you want a salad month. All right, so we're gonna chop the potatoes up really finely, and then we're simply gonna add some grated onion, which to me are like the key to latkes. Cause latkes growing up, I was always like, oh, they're uh, Jewish for McDonald's hash browns is what a lock is, if you were wondering. But no, growing up, I always kind of thought like, oh, this is just a hash brown. Uh, and so before, when I would make latkes, I would just try and make them as crispy as possible. But now I really love to lean into the wetness of a latka. And a lot of that is going to be coming from grated onion. And so it's like a hash brown, but soggy. But it's great. It's great and it's a holiday tradition and it's absolutely a delicious food. You dip it in sour cream and applesauce. Why? I don't really know. All right, so we got that. We're just gonna add a lot of nice grated onion. I'm gonna squeeze out some of the onion juice by hand. <laughs> Pop that in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. That's nice. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Oh. Oh, onion juice might make a good cocktail addition. I'm, uh, we're shooting on a Friday, by the way. Just to tell you all that, and um, I are, I've been planning my post-work cocktail. It's not like a necessity. I'm not like one of those guys, you know? But like, it's a thing I enjoy, and so that's why I got it on the brain. It's gonna add a little bit of egg to bind, and then a little bit of flour. Uh, flour is gonna make this all sort of come together. There we go. And I was kinda, we'll have actual quantities for the recipe uh, in the description, but honestly, like, it depends how much juice you get out of, uh, out of your onion. It depends the, you know, density of french fries you got. Lakas I always just make by hand and feel. And so you want this to sort of come together into like a loose dough. And the onion juice is going to hydrate. Yeah. You don't want it too dry. You don't want too much flour in there. Your latkes are gonna get gummy. I'm gonna lube up my hands. This is how I make latkes. I always lube up my hands. I like to make my hand, a lot of people make latkes by putting a ball in there and then smashing it down with a spatula. Eh, it's always a little bit difficult for me. So I'm just gonna take some, and I like to form them into discs with some lubed up hands, kind of turn it around like a burger patty. But God, is that deep fryer okay? Oh, it sounds like me after eating Chipotle. Tip to making latkes, always start with clean hands. That way you 
Also, tip to see if oil's hot, flick a little bit of water in it. Like, maybe don't, but that's what I do. Uh, to any fellow Jews who were offended, sorry. I don't know, it gives a bag of fries. It's fine, you know? This is, I'm not like advocating this, these for religious high holidays. You know, unless, well, yeah, do it. Do it for the big ones. These actually look really good. I mean, these are like nice little potato croquettes. And so simple, came together in just five minutes-ish. Some people prepared them for, but lockers are frying, we're gonna let those go for about three minutes, then we're gonna flip them, and then we're gonna salt them, and then we're gonna dip them in applesauce. All right, lockers are done frying, you're gonna take some uh, watered up paper towels that are gently used out of your pouch, and now we're gonna pull them, fry them for about three minutes on each side, yeah, they're looking good. Actually, no, they're like 15 seconds away, so I'm gonna stall. I'm gonna be like, oh my God. You see the beautiful edges on these pan beautiful potato pancakes. They're a lot, because Bobby Flay and Sophie Flay from your delightful podcast that you host together. First episode, Bobby Flay is like, I'm making potato pancakes. The Jewish people call them latkes, but they're potato pancakes. What do you mean, what do you mean but they're potato pancakes? Don't goisplain. I, I love Bob. Bobby and Sophie Flay. You're both delightful. I, I'm, just, I'm, just, uh, I'm just out here giving you guff. There we go, now they're perfect. All right, so we're gonna pull these latkes. Just gonna get them out. Oh, these are, these are really crispy. Real delicious. It's gonna, ow, geez, why do I always assume it's not gonna hurt? That's nice as it does. I'm gonna take a little bit of salt, hit it. You don't salt it before because it's gonna leach too much moisture out of the raw potatoes, but I guess it doesn't really, these have salt in them already, so we're chill. I'm gonna take those, plate these bad boys up. Ah, oh, crap. You get to choose one, it's 50 cents for the other one. You chose sour cream. Don't show this part. Just cut it, just show it that we had it in this the whole time. All right, let's dig in. They're still fresh, hot, out of the fryer. Oh, it uh, freaking smells like a latke. I mean, it's, it's the grated onion in there that really makes it, and the little bit of egg holding it together. You can get the little shreds in there. I always, okay, what I like to do is I take my latke and I go into the sour cream, and then this is gonna get gross by the third bite but then I go into the applesauce. You can already see some of the sour cream leaching in there. Mazel's off, it's a latka. Also, Nicole told me that these look exactly like Persian latkas or cuckoo sib zamini, and I think that's pretty rad. Thanks for validating me, Nicole. Uh, no, these are good as hell. You get them, the fries are pre-salted, so it just like seasons up your latka from the inside out. It's a delight, no browning potatoes, no accidentally cutting your hand on the grater getting blood in the lockers ruining Hanukkah. This is a good time you should make this, but that's not the only hack, but I said there'd be three earlier. Now we have to. So I'll see you in the next thing. Here we have ingredient A. This is Nicole Hendizade. You still, you still, you haven't changed your name on a DoorDash? That's my lunch! We have Nicole's half-eaten burrito bowl from Chipotle. I'm gonna show you how to use frozen french fries to turn any leftovers into a delicious hash. Uh, this is one of the best things uh, for the adults out there for little hangovers, uh, and for the kids out there for the hangovers off of O'Doul's. Kids like O'Doul's? Anyways, point is, I'm gonna make a breakfast hash. Uh, this is something that I am a big believer in. Uh, great Saturday morning thing. Take any potato you got. When you're using raw potatoes, you gotta worry about them like cooking in time and whatnot. But when you use cooked french fries, you just throw it in there with whatever leftovers you have, saute it up, top it with an egg, and you got a delicious brunch. To, to keep going in the hack theme, this is the same oil I used for the latke. It's gonna pour a little bit of that to fry an egg, <laughs> and the rest of that's gonna be for the hash. Hold on. Wait, is this burner on? Hey, what the hell going on here? Okay, cool. Yeah, you're gonna crack an egg in there, top of the little sunny side up. Sunny side, just keep it going low and slow. There we go. Kobe. We're just gonna chop these potatoes up pretty fine. I don't like when restaurants serve you something that they call hash, and then it's just like large chunks of potatoes with things near it. Uh, I'm a big fan of it, it all just kind of mashed together into a brick that creates a kind of paste, because I grew up eating corned beef hash out of the can. Uh, shout out to the Filipino community out there because uh, no one loves corned beef hash more than like boomer dads and Filipino people. I don't believe that's a stereotype, that's just true. Uh, and so I, this is my ode to that. So I'm gonna take the potatoes. Yeah, to get them sizzling in a pan, you wanna heat your oil real hot, crank that pan all the way up. We're gonna let these go till they get a little bit crispy. What the, this is the, this egg is like when you see someone whose head is too small for their body, and you're just like, how did that happen? 
How many barbell shrugs did you do to create those giant traps and shoulders? With that tiny little head. Uh, this is a great little trick, the wrist flip. Load the bottom of the pan, keep the wrist nice and limp, and then just hit them with the flick. If you wanna look like you know how to cook, there's a big thing they teach like people playing chefs in movies. I was watching um, Devil Wears Prada, Adrian Grenier. He's cooking a grilled cheese in a pan. He's literally going, just flipping a grilled cheese back and forth. I'm just like, what the hell is, that's not a thing. But that's what you do if you wanna look like a chef. It's like when people pantomime driving, they do this. And it's like, who's driving like that? Yeah, pulled over, put through a field sobriety test. All right, so we got the potatoes getting nice and crispy. Now, um, this is, Nicola says carnitas, corn salsa, hot salsa, cheese, black beans, no rice? No rice? No rice. Watching the carbs? No. Yeah, rice is just, it's too much. You told me not to get rice. What? Oh, now it sounds like I'm restricting your carb intake and that's weird as hell. So we got a burrito bowl, no rice. You get in your veggies in here. Um, I really love doing this with leftovers. Typically it would be with Zenku chicken, but y'all don't got Zenku chicken. And so my next choice would be Chipotle. Uh, I mean, honestly, you got pork, you got your salsas, your spices, you got your fajita veggies in there, you got some cheese and some beans. This is a delicious Southwestern hash. You could find it on like a Chili's new brunch menu probably. Does Chili's do brunch? Bro, I'd eat brunch at Chili's. And now, the technique to a hash. This is egg done? Hell yeah, egg's done. Technique to a hash. You do this for like a while. You just let it sit. You don't touch it. You don't touch it because you want to get a crispy layer on the bottom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and arrange this into a crispy layer. Um, this is like, uh, in Persian cuisine, a tadig, except with the leftover chipotle burrito bowl and some orida french fries. So we're just going to smash that in there, let it get crispy. And then in about three minutes, we're going to go ahead and break it and scrape up those burnt edges off the bottom to be a nice crispy hash. Megan, can you see it? Yeah. Can you see the food? Yeah. All right, cool, because the people should know about this very advanced cooking technique. So what I like to do with the hash, I've been kind of sauteing it around, but then when you get it to a nice place where everything's cooked, you kind of pat it down like that, and then you're sort of forcing a crust in the bottom. You see a little bit of crustage there, but I like to pat it down, and then you sit and wait, and when you think it's ready, you wait another 10 seconds so you get a little bit more browning on the bottom, and then you go in and you do one of these. Yeah, and then you get it nice and crusty. And that's called cooking. Is this a technique that you could use? Uh, fill out the YouTube survey below. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, that hot sauce is getting you. There you go. Then you kind of chop it up. You get the hash in there. And then you do some of these little flippity dips. And this is our Chipotle leftover hash. But honestly, uh, do this with any leftovers. I take like random stuff, including sauces, and I'll just toss it in with some potatoes and then fry it till it's crispy. The sauces absorb, get nice and concentrated in their flavor. Uh, and then you top it with a fried egg, that's breakfast. I don't know if you need someone to tell you to do that or to give you permission, but officially uh, the guy on YouTube with probably one of the top, I don't know, like 18 most popular YouTube cooking shows, 25 most popular cooking shows, told you you can do it. So I don't know, you, now you can do it. I'm gonna take that hash. Honestly, we got a lovely crisp on that. I don't know if that's coming from the cheese or where that is in the expert plating technique. You go in and you kind of use your hands to mash at it, kind of mound it up on the plate. There you go, I wanna get some more crispy bits. Ooh, yeah, this is ow. There we go, and then, yeah, again, you're mashing and you're mashing, and then, beautiful, and then you're gonna eat some of it like straight out of the pan, you're gonna go, and go, and I'm gonna be the hot, and then what you do is you take the spatula and you scrape it on the pan, because then now this becomes your egg spatula. And now you're gonna take that egg, and you're just gonna plate that right on top. It's sticking to some of the cheese from the hash. And then we have a really great plating technique here too. This is a way that's gonna elevate any of your dishes. You just kinda, all right, now we're done. This is it. I don't know, what else did you want? This is delicious, come on, it's a cool little technique. You make a hash out of any leftovers, frozen french fries. And then you got delicious Southwest Chipotle hash. Oh, we got any jarred salsa? Nice and rustic. And voila, there you have it. There's breakfast, eat up kids. <laughs> Dad's got things to do today. If I was cooking this at home, I would put a scoop of Greek yogurt on it, but my Greek yogurt froze. And that means our fridge is at least keeping the food cold. Dude, what? I like a protein popsicle. All right, got that in, break the yolk, smear it around. 
This is smelling all kinds of delicious. That is still steaming hot. You got some bell pepper in there, some crispy pork. It's a big freaking bite, man. Oh. I cooled it down. Leftover frozen French fry hash, the official breakfast of divorced dads trying their best, and the mythical kitchen. Making loaded baked potato soup, except we're using fried potatoes. You might say, is that loaded fried potato soup? Nope. That's what we're doing. We're gonna take these here French fries uh, and we're gonna boil them in milk and water with some chicken bouillon, a little bit of white pepper, a little bit of garlic powder in there. Biggest tip I can give you in the kitchen is uh, go in there with no fear, no inhibitions. Uh, uh, bouillon also, it's just great. Bouillon is literally just dehydrated stock. Store-bought chicken stock is the biggest waste of money outside of buying a kombucha every time you go to the store just because it's there. Chris is laughing because he knows. It's just, what, like one, what, once, twice a week, say you go to the store, you know, you buy a kombucha, that's what, that's like 40 bucks a month on kombucha. It's upsetting, I'm spending like $500 a year on kombucha and then I wonder like, oh, I can you buy a house, it's the real estate market's fault. No, don't have damn money away on kombucha. Anyways, point is, Chicken bouillon cube, you add that to water, it becomes chicken stock. Also, there's probably a bunch of delicious like MSG uh, and other tasty things in there. So get yourself some of those. So right now, oh Jesus Christ, bacon gods are angry today. We have not made our blood sacrifice. Trevor! All right, so we're just gonna render this bacon uh, and then I'm gonna use that bacon fat. Don't throw away valuable bacon fat. People are like, I store it under my sink and I keep it for what? No, just store it in your body. That's the easiest way to get rid of bacon fat. You just, you know, one, this is the ultimate compost heap, is yourself. Don't compost, just eat all your, you got broccoli stems, just choke them down. You'll compost them through your body. <laughs> Potato skins. I am fascinated with those like zero waste cooks who are just like, here's how to make banana skins edible. I'm just like, oh God, is it worth it? <laughs> we, <laughs> we used to have a rule where I wasn't allowed to eat a banana before filming because I just can't just burp constantly. Man, I want my pre-shoot bananas back. There we go, bacon's rendered, keep that fat in there. Get that going on paper towels, it's gonna be nice little bacon bits. At the top are loaded, baked potato, thingamajigger. All right, we're gonna take a bunch of french fries, put that into the bacon grease. Now we're gonna take water, we're gonna cover the french fries in water. We're gonna simmer our potatoes, and then we're gonna cover that and we're gonna cover the water in milk. And we're gonna simmer the potatoes in milk water. And then we're gonna add bouillon to the milk water potato, making a bouillon milk water potato. You ever just eaten one of these? You did? What happened? Just get like, just kidney stone immediately? All right, so we're just gonna bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna transfer that to our handy dandy Vitamix. The easiest thing to do at home is to buy yourself a $600 blender on a production budget of a mid-sized entertainment company in Burbank, California. You can use any blender you got. A uh, cheap $20 Oster blender from Target, God bless them. Uh, that'll get you the exact same place as Vitamix will but you won't be able to like, uh... what do they What do they have in the commercials for this? They're like, you can put, you blend rocks. The blender's so strong, it blends rocks. And someone like throws rocks in there and turns to sand. And it's like, oh great, I'll make rock soup. Give me, yeah, it's gonna take a second. Yeah, the piss off. I meant me, I meant me. I'm gonna be, don't, I wasn't talking to you. You're lovely, stop, stop it. Our milk potatoes have been boiling with the chicken cube in there uh, just for about three minutes. It's smelling like milk potatoes, that's good. <laughs> Not to be confused with Scoopski potatoes. <laughs> that's for Nicole, she loves it. It's a fun sketch from the, uh, what are they called? The uh, Impractical Jokers, what a delight. Carrying that network. Uh, and we're gonna pour all this into a blender, don't burn yourself. And then we're gonna <laughs> blend, <laughs> blend that up. And then I forgot I had some powder, so I said I was gonna add some garlic powder going in there because that tastes like good. And then this is a uh, white, white powder, pepper. One of these is garlic powder, one of them is white pepper, doesn't matter which. Choose which, whichever one you believe was garlic powder is, because this isn't real. Sissy ne pa cooking show and all that, you know? Uh, yeah, I'll salt, I, I'll add salt and pepper later. You take, take, out, take out the little, take out the shaft from the hole. You're gonna take a hand towel and you can put it over there and just hope you don't get facial burns. And then a uh, variable to turn it, oh God. Oh boy. And then turn it to high. Yeah, you want to feel 
the Vitamix struggling against the tensile strength of the potatoes. Look at that, we got a beautiful silken frozen french fry bisque. I'm gonna taste a little bit of scalding hot soup. Mmm! Uh. <laughs> Bouillon! Black pepper loves potatoes just like uh, how Bob loves abishola. Anyone watch Bob Hart's Abishola? No? Nice little CBS, uh, CBS comedy? There you go. You done well, old dog. Now we're gonna take a bowl. It's like a plate, but deep. And then we're gonna, um, it's kinda, pour that potato soup. What are they laughing at? This is good as hell. There you, take, there you go. Ha, yeah. All right, now I'm gonna take some cheddar cheese because this is a load. Why do you put on a loaded baked potato? You get some cheese on there, come on. And you're gonna take some cheese and you kind of put some cheese around there. You know, kind of get, nestle a little bit of cheeses, uh, praise cheeses. Uh, there it goes. And then uh, that's the way you do this uh, sour cream. Got to nest, no, this is good bacon. You can take some bacon bits and you kind of scatter, scatter them bad boys around, you know. Those little bacon, because it's a bit loaded baked potato. You put some bacon on it, yeah. And then like, get the bacon bits yourself, you piece of crap. That's how people at Sizzler talk to me. And then you take do, 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 do a dollop of Ralph's brand sour cream. Save 30 cents, don't, don't get name brand. It all comes from the same cows. Yeah, it was just killing our daisy swells. Like, what a crappy, oh man, that was supposed to be a nice little dollop. Yeah, screw it. Uh, Jives. Dude, was it cut with a lawnmower? What the hell happened here? Hold on, let me throw out, throw out some of these. There we go, and then... There you have it, you got your loaded baked potato soup, except made from fried potatoes, blended in a $600 machine, made for NASA, and now let's eat it. I'm gonna use the same the sour cream garnish spoon to eat your soup. This looks great. This looks like a cup of something you would get at the Panera Bread. Last time I went to Panera Bread, 2013. <laughs> Using the french fries as a potato instead of raw potato, all you're getting in there is fat, salt, and potato. And so when you're like boiling that and blending it into a soup, honestly, this, this is the silkiest potato soup that I have ever had. Potato soup's weird, because it's like, what if mashed potatoes but water? <laughs> That's a good soup. I'm gonna take a boba straw to this whole thing and just really go to town. Ooh, oh, so hot, fudge. There you have it, we got the three easy frozen french fry hacks. Honestly, I always keep frozen french fries in my freezer and sometimes I just get bored with them as normal french fries. Use some of these, tag us in what you make. Thanks so much for stopping by. We got new episodes every week wherever you get your episodes, which is probably here. We got new episodes of our podcast, The Hot Dogs and Sandwich, every Wednesday wherever you get your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. Just like Karen did, she and her brother Patrick made the Reuben poutine, AKA the Jutine, and they even added fresh cracked caraway seeds to it, which Karen, why are you outshining me? On my show, with the fresh cracked caraway. That's a great idea though, because that's one of the flavors of rye. That's smart, Karen, I see you. I see you lurking out there. Uh, do that, all right, bye. I forgot how to end an episode. Was it like this? Do we always do this? Normally it's like me doing something stupid at the end. You like, I say something and then it's me in the background being like, to fish fart? And then like, that's, and that's it, that's the episode, we're done. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towels, available now at mythical.com.